Congratulations on the IPO. You raised $1.7 billion. You could have raised more money, though. Why only $1.7 <laughs> Yeah, because this is an A-share uh, addition uh, issue in Hong Kong market. So this is an A-share. So that we have uh, a certain limitation of uh, the dilution of 25% maximum. Okay. And then this time we regulated ourselves as a 10%. So okay. it is a calculation about that. So 1.7, most of that goes into debt servicing? Yes. Okay. And yes. the rest, uh, in terms the of rest expansion? Go, yeah, the rest goes to several projects that are listed in the prospectus. Okay. Uh, like one of the factory lithium carbonate and some of the money goes to the lithium mining project. Yeah. It, so in about, I'd say, what, three years from now, where do you see your production capacity of, your, of the company? Uh, so currently we have only about uh, uh, 45,000 tons mm -hmm. of our own factories. And then in the next three years, uh, we are thinking to uh, reach a quantity of about 110,000 uh, tons of lithium hydroxide plus carbonate together. Uh, in terms of then revenue guidance, you, I think it was five, over five billion uh, was the first quarter revenue for the company. And yeah. we were, you and I were talking during the break, a lot of that had to do with the price of lithium going up. Yes. Uh, where do you think revenues will be? Can you maintain that growth clip is what I want to ask. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to define the figure right now, but I see okay. that for the continuous uh, ramp up of the revenues and the price is, um, is something that we can foresee. Mm. That as always, I see the relationship in between of the demand and supply is uh, definite uh, purpose. We say that in the next two, three years, uh, we won't see any new outcome of the lithium uh, sport you mean, so, or, or, or brines coming out from all over the world, so uh, it must be still a shortage of the supply. Okay, and so you are seeing a lot of demand still, say compared to 12 months back, where do you think demand is now? The demand is increasing, though. I can only see from our peers, like our customers, um, like uh, battery makers and the EV makers, and their increasing uh, plan. Um, make one example, one of our customers is three times of their current productions. Okay, yeah. I understood. And just to clarify, the, the type of product that we get on mainland China, battery grade? Yes, exactly. Ba okay, and the reason I bring that up as well, that Goldman Sachs, mm -hmm. their, their analyst came on our shows mm. about two, two weeks back, and mm. they basically said the prices of lithium, among other things, mm. is expected to come down because there's just been so much investment mm. in the sector that demand hasn't kept up. Mm. I'm wondering if you, obviously you don't agree with that view, mm. uh, <laughs> but do you think there has been too much investment? Yeah, no. I don't agree, and say that because I am inside the industry. Okay. That I say that <laughs> I, I don't comment about Goldman Sachs. Okay. I say that ourselves we know it very well. So we know how is the procedure and what is the technology and then the barriers of entry into this industry. So that right. we know very well um, how is our peers that in Argentina, in Chile, in Africa that they open the minds of the greenfield project and how mm. long time it takes and how is the barrier that they can have any outcome. So I say in the next the two, three years, there are some products coming out. I mean, sport means or core is mine product, but uh, it only can be the positive influence because uh, the demand of the supply is never catching up to uh, the, the supply. It's never catching up to the demand. So the outcome of the new uh, product coming out from these new mines can be only positively uh, stabilizing the price instead of getting down that which I will never see. Okay, so let's 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 try and put a number to that. Even if it's a rough number, I know it's, there's a lots of things to, hard to forecast in the future. So from now, compared in the next three years, where do you see demand? How how much do you see the industry growing? The industry of uh, let me say, uh, most of the people uh, they may misunderstood about the lithium using only on the uh, EV. Right. But instead, there's a huge section which is uh, the the energy storage. Okay. Uh, this is going to be um, uh, triple, uh, four times more developed and, uh, and increasing. And to say only about the uh, EV, uh, we say the quantity not only limited in China, instead also that in Europe and also in the other areas of the world, that the, 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 the increasing, I think, uh, from all our customers' feedback uh, has to be four or five times more than now in oh. the next uh, three, four years. It, it sounds all v very bullish, and I know we could spend a lot more time on this, but I, but I guess my question is, when you look at how you've expanded your company in the mm. last few years, or so you've taken on a lot of debt, mm. the reason why you're raising equity is to sort of normalize some of the debt ratios there. 
is, is the formula for growth going to be the same, acquisitions, buying assets, and building up debt, or do you see yourself doing it slightly differently, alongside growth, of course? Now, first of all, uh, like this time, all the money we raised is uh, to pay back to the syndicate bank loan. Okay. And after that, we will have to keep a very healthy level of leverage that we will keep at about 35 to 40 percent. Mm. And after that, we will see how is our development. Every time we see the development and increasing programs, we will see the necessity and the commercial evaluations and the partnerships. And then w once we see everything's perfect there, we will definitely go. Uh, make one example. If I see a nice quarry, a nice mine in mm. Argentina, it doesn't mean that I will have to take it or I won't leave it. We will have to evaluate. And uh, once we feel the necessity, we will do that.